Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. This is Auto Line Daily for September 13th, 2010, and now the news. For several months now, Volkswagen of America has been running without anyone running it. But according to the Wall Street Journal, Volkswagen is naming Jonathan Browning, the former vice president of global sales service and marketing at GM, as its top U.S. executive. The position was formerly held by Stefan Jacoby, who unexpectedly left the company in June to go run Volvo, which of course was recently acquired by Chinese automaker Geely. And there's more to this game of musical chairs amongst executives in the industry. The Detroit Free Press reports that Toyota just hired former GM executive Mark Hogan as an advisor. Up until a decade ago, Hogan had a brilliant career at GM, but when he was given the task of making small cars in America and doing it profitably, he clashed with then UAW president Steve Jokic, who objected to work rule changes that would make GM plants more efficient. Rather than back Hogan up, GM management moved him out of automotive operations and he later left the company. You know, Toyota's going to find that Mark Hogan is a vast repository of automotive information. Here's an interesting tidbit coming out of China. Land Rover is thinking about spinning off Range Rover as an entirely separate brand. Currently, the Range Rover is the top model in the Land Rover lineup, but now the company is thinking about adding the Range Rover Sport and Range Rover Evoque to form the new Range Rover brand. Gasco reports that Land Rover is thinking about making this change on a worldwide basis. Presumably, that would allow Range Rover to move even more upscale while the Land Rover brand would become more mass market. And this next story ties in perfectly with that. According to Gasco, a new report out of China says Chinese consumers don't really like compact cars. They think they're too small and too expensive for what they are. Nearly 90% of people polled said Nissan's new small car, the March, is too expensive with its $10,000 price tag. The same report says three quarters of consumers do not believe compact cars have a bright future in the Chinese market, and they say they prefer larger vehicles with good styling. Lots about batteries in the news. A123 is officially opening its battery plant for electric cars in Michigan today. And GM announces that it's investing $3 million into a startup company called SACT3 that will make advanced EV batteries. But here's my auto line insight. All around the world, countries and companies are building up an EV infrastructure that's based on massive government subsidies. Subsidies to build battery plants, subsidies to build EV assembly plants, subsidies to install battery chargers, and subsidies for consumers to buy these electric cars. You know, at some point, these subsidies are going to run out. I give them maybe three years. And it's hard to see how this vast EV infrastructure is going to survive when those subsidies dry up. Besides, there's a lot more life left in the internal combustion engine. For example, Federal Mogul just introduced the new kind of piston ring for direct injection and diesel engines. The ring cuts oil use by 50% and friction by 15%. While most piston rings apply equal pressure around a cylinder, Federal Mogul's ring combines a stepped surface and a taper on its contacting edge. This means the downstroke scrapes more oil off the cylinder walls and returns more oil to the pan. Thanks to this, the ring reduces both fuel consumption and CO2 emissions. You know, maybe Chinese car buyers are not interested in compact cars, but will Americans buy them? Coming up after the break, a look at one of the newest compact cars that's about to hit the market. Introducing Bridgestone's third generation of run-flat tires with groundbreaking new Bridgestone technologies. Bridgestone run-flat tires offer improved ride comfort, lower rolling resistance, and improved wear while giving you the peace of mind and comfort you need. Presumably, we're going to have to drive smaller vehicles in the future as fuel economy standards get stricter and stricter. Automakers are working on a whole new crop of compact cars that will deliver the mileage we need with the performance and features that we want. Autoline Daily correspondent Craig Cole just test drove one that's about to make its North American debut. 
John, we're in Washington, D.C., standing right outside of the Library of Congress, where we've been looking into some of the great American crews. You know, like the sailors of the America's Cup winning boat, the Stars and Stripes? Or how about the most decorated show in Emmy history, Frasier? And while I'm talking about show business, we can't forget about box office star Tom Cruise. But there's another cruise that's looking to make a big impact, and that is the Chevy Cruise. GM is hoping its latest small car will be a smash hit in America. And there's no reason it shouldn't be. It's already climbing up the sales charts in 60 markets around the world. The Cruise is a global product from the ground up, but the company is building it in the good old U.S. of A. at its plant in Lordstown, Ohio. GM invested some $350 million in the facility to get production rolling. That sounds like a lot of money for an entry-level product, but the Cruise is anything but bargain basement. We felt it was really important to provide an upscale presence. From inside, when you sit in it, it feels roomy and expansive. Uh, beautiful materials on the inside of uh, the vehicle. Also, we're offering a number of upscale features you would find that typically on vehicles in other segments, including luxury segments. For example, navigation will be available in the cruise. USB uh, ports also will have uh, Bluetooth up-level stereos. So really, you're going to give up-level features and presence to the cruise, which we think will make a real difference in the segment. Besides high-end features, Chevrolet also focused a lot of attention on interior quality. The plastics are nicely textured and everything is well put together. But all of this refinement isn't just for show. On the road, the Cruise is as quiet as a luxury car and its front seats are road trip comfortable. Attention to detail continues on the outside, too. This may be the best looking car in its class, especially when equipped with the optional RS appearance package, which includes things like unique rocker moldings, a rear spoiler and fog lamps. Accentuating the look, panel gaps are kept to a minuscule three millimeters or less. Another thing that's tiny about the cruise is what's behind that egg crate grill. It's a 1.4 liter turbocharged engine, 138 horsepower and 145 foot-pounds of torque. The peak torque of the car is actually at a much lower RPM, so it's in the driving range, you know, approximately 1,500 to 3,000, you know, up to 5,000 RPM, but you're, it's in the driving range that the customer uses the vehicle. The Cruze is no race car, but when equipped with the turbo engine, it has more low RPM torque than you'd expect, which is part of what makes it drive like a bigger, more expensive vehicle. Speaking of money, the base price is about $17,000, including destination. That's for an LS model with a naturally aspirated 1.8 liter engine. A top of the line LTZ version can be had for around twenty-three grand. Look for the Chevy Cruze at dealerships later this year. Thanks, Craig. You know, after launch, a special eco version of the Cruise will debut. With a six-speed manual transmission and special aerodynamic tweaks, it's expected to deliver best-in-class fuel economy up to 40 miles per gallon on the highway. Hey, don't forget to join us tonight for Open Line, the best automotive call-in show on the internet. To get in on the action, dial 218-936-6581. Then you'll have to enter a PIN and you can get all that information in the show notes. The doors open at 8 p.m. Eastern time and the party goes on till whenever you're done. Stop in for five minutes or stay all night. Either way, it is a lot of fun. And that brings us to the end of today's report on the latest news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.